All right, this is Mr. Jern again. I'm going to talk to you about POE 1.1.1, the DL version, the distance learning version, part two. Uh, I'm scrolling down here because we did all this in part one. And I'm gonna talk about the, the wheel and axle and the pulleys today for this video, okay? So I'm gonna start with the wheel and axle. I'm gonna click on that, it's gonna open it up nicely. I'm gonna close this little menu to the side again because that just gets in the way a bit. And then optionally, you can also hit F11. That'll get rid of the top part too. I'm gonna to keep that up there because I'm gonna be dealing with multiple tabs. You might as well, it's up to you. Uh, definitely something you wanna do is review the slides here. Uh, I talked about it in the, in the video again, but I think it's not a bad idea to open. In fact, I think I highly recommend it because well, you probably don't remember this very much, very well. I, I'm just guessing, uh, you know. So um, I, I did, I myself checked it out to make sure that, you know, everything looked good. So this will bring you to the, uh, the, the PowerPoint, check it out, and then go on. It's going to be part two. And this is where you're going to want to start putting up in your uh, engineering notebook again to start taking some notes, uh, write, write this stuff down, radius of this wheel, maybe do a little sketch of the doorknob and and make some annotations about the measurements okay not maybe do it so make a sketch about the doorknob make a sketch of the doorknob and start annotating and making some notes on the machine that we have here so it tells you about the uh the the radius of the wheel it tells you about the radius of the axle which is the tiny little like thing inside there that actually opens the door and it tells you about the actual effort force that was needed to open the door and it tells you the efficiency of this knob, which is nice because once again, the thing you cannot, oh wait, you could kind of see it. I think I might've figured it out, is uh, efficiency. This is my three equations from before. And I, you know, you might want a little bit more information, maybe jot some stuff, like maybe jot some stuff down from these notes into your engineering notebook. That's perfect. In fact, I highly recommend doing that. That's what the engineering notebook is there for, for you to literally take notes. That's why it's called a notebook. Uh, so do that and uh, have everything that you need right there. I have mine on a little piece of paper. I don't have my engineering notebook in front of me. You probably want to write it in your engineering notebook. So I have all this information and now right away we have to do calculations. Holy cow. We don't even get like a simulation or an intro. Nope. Right to it. So this is where the practice comes in where you, I, I'm not gonna give you much handholding here because uh, the hardest part of this class <coughs> is figuring, excuse me, is figuring out the variables, okay? That's it, take your time. You've only got a few variables to work with, really. You just have to figure out what's what. So we need to figure out the ideal, ideal mechanic, this thing, the ideal mechanical advantage. It won't even let me highlight it, there we go, okay? So that kind of clues you in on which equation you're going to use. And you've got the DE and the DR. So it tells you the resistance force is applied to the axle. So you need to figure out what is the ideal mechanical advantage based on this information up here. Except in this case, you well, the resistance force is applied to the axle. Basically use this information and figure out what is the mechanical advantage, the ideal mechanical advantage? We're not worried about efficiency yet. Okay, forget about that for this question. Then, considering the efficiency of the system, so now we know the efficiency, uh, you have to calculate what is the actual mechanical, mechanical, mechanical advantage, okay? Using the, the what you figured out for the ideal mechanical advantage, Knowing the efficiency, you had to figure out the actual mechanical mechanical advantage. So algebra, it's all algebra, this is all algebra, okay? So once you got the actual mechanical advantage and you know the uh, effort force required to open the door, what is the resistance force required to open up the door? That's it. So I know I say that's it, a piece of cake, right? No. This is going to be confusing to you. Go back, rewind what I said, listen again. It'll click, but it's going to take some time. Your brain has to, remember the whole metacognition thing? Your brain has to start getting used to thinking like an engineer, which is not easy. That's why engineers get paid money, okay? Because it takes hard work. It takes effort. It's very rewarding, but it's also sometimes very difficult. Okay, so that's gonna be our first wheel. And then basically it's similar-ish type of stuff. You're gonna get a whole bunch of different examples of wheels and axles. 
and it's going to give you some of the information and you're going to have to figure out the other information okay so it's just a series of you're going to use these formulas these formulae if you want to be you know correct and you have to you're given some you have to figure out the rest it's algebra it's solve for x you know in in algebra equation so that's all this is so make sure for every single example you write down some information about the what they're talking about maybe give not maybe give it a sketch it okay an annotated sketch with all the um all the uh all the all the dimensions and whatnot uh just uh orthographic okay it doesn't have to be isometric just flat out if you want to do isometric i guess that's cool but i don't think it's necessary here and that is it for you know there's some questions here at the end um that's it for this part of the activity then once you're done with that you're going to go on to pulleys okay so click on the pulleys and um once again a couple things you're going to want to review the slides of the pulley uh, about the pulley uh because and maybe take some jot some notes down in your engineering notebook okay i know you probably have these notes that written down somewhere else but write the notes in your engineering notebook um and here's a picture and this is starting to look like the first one isn't it like the we're gonna to do some data here so video of a simple pulley and you can see he's gonna use a force sensor so we're gonna to have to get some data here um now we're gonna calculate the ideal mechanical this question is super i don't like how it's worded because if you look at the notes what's the ideal mechanical advantage of a simple pulley there's no calculations involved. So I don't necessarily need you to go through all of this, but you should explain your reasoning, okay? And by explain your reasoning, just state it. Like this is what it is. The mechanical, ideal mechanical advantage of this pulley setup is blank because it is this kind of pulley, blah, blah, blah. You know, give me a reason. That's just what it is. Okay, maybe give me the reason it's given in the, in the notes. So then, now here's the thing. We're gonna to have to do something different here. You're gonna to have to use the actual, you're gonna find the actual effort force by analyzing actual data. We're gonna use the maximum value, okay? So what we're gonna do now, this is gonna be a little bit of a crash course in gra vernier graphical analysis. You don't even need to open up the program. I'm assuming you have it. We'll double check that, I guess. But you're gonna click on this and download it. And when you download it, you're gonna, if you use Chrome, it's just gonna show up in the bottom corner here. I guess I could do it. Okay, it's over here off to the side. I'm gonna click on it, and what's it gonna do? Well, look what's happening. It just opened up Vernier Graphical Analysis, and I hope it opens, because I already have it open, so we'll see what happens. Okay, it should just open. Yeah, see, I got some issues. Um, if this happens, basically, what you might need to do is go to the Untitled, go to Open, and then just open it up directly from where it downloaded to okay because when you download it and open it up it should look something like this i'm going to uh, windowize this so that we could see it i'm gonna make it as big as the screen here so this is this is basically what you should be seeing once you open up the file okay i just tested it, it worked for me okay if you've got vernier graphical analysis installed on your computer um, then this is going to work for you uh, it's a free download i don't think you could download it to your school computer but i think it's ooh, Wait, it's in the software center. Here, if you need to download it, you could ask me a question, but if you need to install it, it's in the software center. Okay, um, if it's, if it's, I'm gonna stop talking about how to install it. If you have questions, just let me know. So now I need to give you an idea. You saw the diet, you saw what the, what the guy did in the other one. And that's what we're gonna do. It says you use the maximum value. That just means we're not gonna include all this stuff right here. We're gonna include the maximum value. So I'm just gonna get a big chunk of that maximum value. This is kind of where you start letting go of it. And I'm just going to use my best judgment. You don't have to like, you can include whatever you want. Use your best judgment on what data to highlight. And I just use it. You could probably just use your finger, I suppose. Um, you don't need to be super accurate here. You're, you are basically getting like hundreds, if not thousands of data points here. So you're going to get a good average. So we're just going to get an average of this data here. And so watch what I do. I'm going to go down to the bottom left-hand corner. There is this little thing that looks like a uh, graph. It's called graph tools. I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to view statistics because I want the average and that's a statistic that I want. So I'm going to click view statistics boink, and now this popped up the statistics. Okay. I could, I could, thought I could move around, but I cannot. It doesn't really matter though. 
So we want the average, and if you remember the actual word for average, the mathematical word for average is mean. So I'm gonna want the mean here. So the mean or the average force uh, for this, according to my this data here, is 2.7. Now, do this yourself. Don't just go off of this video, okay? Do this yourself and make sure you can verify that you get something very close to it, 2.7-ish. 2.7, we'll call it, ish. Okay, four six is what I got, but you'll you'll almost definitely get something different than I do when it comes to the hundredths and, and thousandths place. So if you get two point seven uh, newtons, you are good. Now once again, I wonder if I could just change this to. I don't think I'm going to be able to change it. Yeah, see, I need a sensor connected to uh, to change this. Can I column options? Here I am changing it right in front of you. Yeah, I need the force sensor hooked up so you could change this to newtons, and we could do that when we get back to class. But we want it in what now? Not newtons. We want it in pounds. How many pounds is 2.7 newtons? 2.7 newtons is equivalent to about 0 0.607 pounds force. So if you didn't hear that, Siri told me that it's about uh, 0 0.607 pounds of force. So there we go. That I'm going to write that down. That is my... Um, that's my actual effort force, okay? I'm gonna write that down. There's not a spot for it in this little thingy here, um, but, you know, write this down here. What? Add a note. Ooh, add a note. Um, write this down in your engineering notebook. Boink. Okay. So what happens if I save that? Oh, I don't know if you're gonna see that, but you might see that. Let me know if you do. All right, um, then I have my uh, my actual effort force. So now I'm gonna calculate my actual mechanical advantage because uh, it doesn't say here, but that is a kilogram again. So a kilogram is 2.2 .2 pounds. Uh, it doesn't say that, that's uh, shocking to me. It doesn't say it ever. So this is one kilogram, okay? One kilogram. So if it's one kilogram, it's 2.2 .2 pounds, uh, it, it came up to two point something pounds. So you can figure out the actual mechanical advantage. So there's gonna be some, uh, you're gonna to have to figure out the efficiency because they're not exactly the same, the actual and the ideal mechanical advantage. And boom, done, okay? So explain the, st so kind of going back to the notes, you're gonna see, this is question eight, don't forget this, okay? So I'm gonna highlight that, don't forget that. Uh, I don't know if the highlight's gonna stick around for you, probably not, but don't forget number eight. Okay, explain what the roles of each strand do in a, in, a, in, a, uh, in a fixed pulley like that. Okay, you might have to go back to the notes. Then you do the same thing for a movable pulley. Okay, this is also, if you look in the engine, in the thingy, let me just, I bet it's right here. Boink, yep. On this slide right here, it's got it there for, it's got it there for you. So I just kind of gave away some secrets here. So you want to basically do the same thing for this movable pulley. There's a video. Uh, here's a data file once again. You want to get the uh, get everything going. You got your block and tackle. It goes shoof, okay. And so um, here's the actual setup. You can kind of get a better idea about what the strands are doing. So make sure you very carefully count those strands. Don't necessarily go by this this red diagram. It doesn't actually, you know, you want to make sure you get the actual uh, setup. So sketch the actual setup. Sketch, 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 sketch everything. Okay, here's a video of it. You're gonna do the same thing, calculate the ideal mechanical advantage. Here's the data file. You're gonna analyze everything just like that. Here's some questions that you're gonna answer, and then you are done with this part. Okay, you could keep going, you could take a break. Uh, next time we're gonna do the incline plane and the screw. Okay, so just like usual, if you have any questions, please let me know.